my creative friends. I'm Shannon from Shannon Studio. And um, we are here talking and giving and thinking about creative life tips. So tips that will help our lives to be just a little more creative. Um, <clears throat> so, well, so tonight, um, just a little bit of the day and of Swedish life. I actually nothing about Swedish life. They, we went to, I went to a parent teacher conference uh, today and it's same as in the US, <laughs> same kind of thing. Hey, hey, Trisha. And so um, we had the parent teacher conference and then, um, so Joseph was off today, um, but he ended up sick tonight. So he has a fever tonight. So I'm feeling pretty sad for him. Hopefully, you know, we'll get to rest a couple of days and he'll be fine. Sickness was kind of going around the school. Um, so also, I just have to say, um, I think I, I, when I talked to you when I was in Paris or just after Paris, at some point I told you about the $100 chicken and the fact that I paid $12 for a chicken when I was in Paris because I wanted a warm meal and it was rotisserie chicken and then we get it and it's like cold. So it's like been this joke for us since we came back from Paris about this $100 chicken. Well tonight, I asked Alan to stop and get me some chicken. There weren't any more rotisserie chickens, so he got some regular chickens. And then he walks in and he goes, I've got to look at this. I just spent $60. And he got um, just like a bag, not even a whole bag full, just a few things. So he looks at the receipt. He paid $27 for a chicken. <laughs> so I passed that drumstick that joke of a drumstick onto him now because now the hundred dollar chicken is really in his in his bag now because it was like he looked and he bought two it's like what kind of chickens are they so anyways gonna gonna pass that one on to him now so um and i just saw when i was getting on allison got her love letters fabric and it was it, she got the um the layer cake one so that's the 10 inch squares and she got one of those and i'm excited to see what she does with that and let's see i think that's all the things for the day i'm just happy that now the hundred dollar chicken joke is in is on alan okay so um starting the conversation hearts um so i you guys sent you guys sent um your comments and so i'm putting them in and you guys are clever, little clevers. And some of them are, you know, and I like Car Carrie Prince and her last name's Prince. She puts your Prince. And um, there's Attitude and Trisha's, you put down great, great love and one to one. I like that, the number's one to one. And Jesse put down create and love and, and uh, Megan put later and and Britt put babe and Rose put, where are you Rose? Oh, follow your heart. And then Dana, Dana just rocked it. She was on fire and gave us all kinds like wonderful, like with a number one, text me, date me, D8, M-E, it's fate, F8. Uh, so there's, these are clever. So I thought, I don't know if, I don't know what I was, you know, I, Free for All Friday is just that. I don't have a real big plan when I do this. So I didn't know if I was gonna paint these with you guys or what, um, but I did have a, a marriage tip. So um, I think I will do that. And um, we'll see, we'll see what happens after that. So I figured since we were doing the conversation hearts, we would talk about conversations in marriage. And the one thing that I think of and that I've maintained for a while is that you have to have the hard conversations. You have to be willing and understand that being married, part of being married is having the hard conversations. Because the marriage relationship is, is one of the most unique relationships in that um, you are accountable to each other to help and, and lift and help to have each other be the best best people we can be um, and we're just people learning how to be decent people and so sometimes we mess up or sometimes we have patterns that are really not good or that really are, are hurtful to our spouse and 
and are hurtful enough that they cause problems. And being older now, we've seen where some of our friends who have been married 30, 35, 40 years are getting a divorce. And you have to ask, how did you stay together that long and then get divorced? Um, and there's various reasons and stuff, but I mean, these are good people. Most of the people I know are good people. I mean, they're, I don't know, well, I won't say what I don't know, but I, you know, they're good people. And um, so, you know, it's like what, what went on, what didn't happen, what did happen that it couldn't continue. So that's, you know, and I kind of have maintained a thought that it's some of the conversations that weren't had or that weren't followed through on or that, that weren't worked out. And the, the topics can be various topics. I, I think most of us who are married can probably understand the topics. Um, but like I said, you can hold your spouse accountable in a way that nobody else can. And if you see a behavior in your spouse, which you're the most intimate person with them, most likely you should be, then you're the one to make that call to say, hey, there, what, what, there might be a problem or we need to talk about this. So um, it's not really the idea that you want, you know, to stay with somebody for 40 years that you really have a problem with. You want, don't want the quantity of years, you want the quality of years and the quantity of years. You want that quality in the relationship. And, um, but with, with the, the hard conversations, um, it brings, it brings a lot of vulnerability. It bring it, you have to be, um, so exposed and sometimes it brings embarrassment or, um, a sh being ashamed or just uncertainty. There's a lot that goes into having conversations you don't want to have. Nobody wants to have the hard conversations. Nobody wants to say, hey, I think this might be a problem for us. Or um, nobody wants to start the conversation. Nobody wants to have the conversation. Nobody wants to be um, a, a kind of a guilty party in the conversation if there is one. Uh, nobody wants to. But they. that's one thing I think um, and that Alan has maintained. He came from, I think, well, I don't want to tattle on his family. He's maintained that he's glad after the fact that I am one that brings up things that for us to talk about um, because they're important. And I just feel like, I, for me, I just can't, um, I'm just looking and I got paint on the wall, I'm splattering paint everywhere. Um, I am just of, of the personnel, I can't give, I can't suffer in silence. <laughs> Though he might wish I did. Um, I, I'm not the suffer in silence type. I'm not the, you know, to fake it, you know, while we're, you know, that sort of thing. I'm just not that way. So I, we, I bring up the things and he hates it. I actually hate it too. But I just know the value of it. And when you're married, you want to be married as long as we have or as long as others have. You have to know that some of the things that are around the corner that you're going to have to deal with in order to maintain that kind of marriage. Um, so just a couple thoughts on that too. And, and if you have thoughts too, write them in the comments and share with us because um, it's valuable to hear. There's not just one way to do marriage. There's just not one way to address things. It's just, there are lots of ways. You're just getting my opinion. It helps to get other people's opinion as well. So, um, just one of the things is you, you kind of don't backhand your spouse as far as verbally backhand. You, you don't backhand them physically, but that should be a given. But you don't verbally backhand them either when you're discussing these things. Because we are at our most exposed. We are, we are just putting it out there. And that's not the time to, you know, get in jabs. Um, because that just closes things off right away. Another thing is... Um, when you start to express the value in the relationship, to maybe even start off with that, expressing why you're bringing it up, why it's important to you, why, you know, what you you see as the relationship. Yesterday we talked about couple vision. Talk about the idea that you don't maybe feel like if we continue doing some of these things that our couple vision is going to be realized. So, uh, you know, talk about the value of the relationship. And then um, 
don't bring it up. You know, if, if it's something that somebody does, which most likely, it's most likely something somebody does or doesn't do, I've never found value to address it in the moment. Even like with my kids, when I'm, when, when, when I, <laughs> this is what happens all the time. When you're out with your kids, they're in public, they do something, you're going, geez, did I not teach them better than that? You know, and you want to address it. And I was always like, don't address it now. There's time later because you're just compounding on the problem of addressing it in front of their friends or out in public where other people can see. And, you know, I try to, to be quiet if I had to do it in public, but it's like some of the, the bigger things, it's like, you know, say it when you get home or say it in the car, that sort of thing. Same with your spouse. It usually isn't going to play out well if you address something that's um, difficult in the moment. <laughs> it just... It just doesn't work because it just escalates in the wrong direction usually. So um, that's the biggest thing for me. It's the biggest tip that I have is um, don't address it in the moment. So that's the tip tonight. Address the hard issues early. You know, have those hard conversations early. And when I mean early, I don't mean um, like you have to do it like right away in the moment. But early as in, don't let things go for years. If you've let it go for years and you haven't addressed it, then let it go completely. Just let it go. But if there are things that are, are hurtful to the relationship, that are detrimental to the relationship, those are the things. And so you don't wait years. You don't wait till you don't want to do it anymore and you want a divorce. You don't do it that way. It's important to you. This relationship, your marriage relationship, my marriage relationship is one of the most important relationships that I have or will ever have. And so I am not going to wait um, for years before something's addressed. So, yeah. So that's it. Have the hard conversations. Value the relationship you have and, and put the effort into it. So with that, that's the tip. Now I'm thinking I'm not going to paint right now. Oh, my lights are everywhere. Wow, these lights are, I got lights everywhere. They, there are no ceiling lights. So I have all these, these like floodlight things, flood lamps all over the house. <laughs> so that's how I do it. Okay. So there's still time to be able to put in a few comments if anybody else has any, and then we will see, I'm thinking about putting this after I'm done putting this um, on a product in Zazzle so you can um, order maybe Valentine's cards. I don't know. So we'll see. Well, then it's in, let's see. Um, you have a creative heartbeat, so listen for it. And then I will see you tomorrow.